little bit further. We know the A types, right? Let me go through them with you. I know you know these by heart, okay? Blue chip, 1923, 1924, Mr. Gingold, first time stock went to a certain price on the New York Stock Exchange, never seen before that high, and he said to a colleague, I'm gonna go back and write about these blue chip stocks. Called blue chip because usually the highest color chip, the most valued chip in poker is blue. Royalty is blue or, or purple, I don't know, whatever country you come from. They're considered the cream of the crop. Large, legendary corporations that will never, ever, you would think, too large to fail. Right? Blue chip. Why would you want blue chip? Steady growth. Right? You're not going to make astronomical in a short period of time, but if you went to finance.yahoo.com um, and you clicked on, like, say, IBM and you looked at it for over a year or two years, you'd see that that, uh, well, maybe I'll choose another company. They had some problems. If you looked at, uh, I don't know, Procter & Gamble, let's use that, Kraft, right? Heinz, Kraft & Heinz. You would see a, uh, um, a line that would go up that, like at a 45 degree angle. That's what you want, right? That's what you want. That's steady growth. And hopefully with, uh, with dividends. So I would suggest in your portfolio, at least three types of stocks make one blue chip. It's up to you. The next is income. Income companies have higher than average dividends, right? Utilities, higher than average date payouts to you every quarter. Make that part of your portfolio. That's like an annuity, okay? I want you to know these eight types because you choose three of these or four of these as part of your portfolio, depending on your tolerance for risk. You're moving towards a diversified portfolio. Defensive. They fare better than most. Doesn't mean they don't lose valuation during poor economic times or inflationary pyramids. Per periods, I should say. Defensive. That's why they call defensive. Think about it. Everybody here uses soap? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Shampoo. Things that you can't do without. Probably even gasoline. Things you can't do without. They fit your basic needs. Those are defensive stock companies. I would suggest maybe to insulate yourself against like poor inflationary times, go ahead and invest in some of those companies. Cyclical. This is where you, if you invest in these companies, you'll be a little bit more active and not as passive in the market. These are companies that do well during good economic times, maybe during poor economic times or high inflationary periods don't do well. Automobile corporations, right? General Motors, Ford. People don't typically buy new cars during high inflationary periods, high interest rates, or poor economic times. They do when things get better, right? Because people are spending more of their money on needs, and they'll do with that car that they have currently, right? But the beauty of investing in this, if you want to go for the risk, you have to be a little more active, is that when the market's down, like it's a bear market, you can start, you can buy, and then you've got to follow the economy. When it gets high, you sell. You make your profit, right? You can be a little bit more active with these. Then you have growth stocks. We talked about that. The Apples, even Facebook right now, or Google, are growth stocks. IBM, I think, is still a, a growth stock. These are companies that have um, a lot of promise and growth. Typically don't pay dividends because they reinvest in the company, and that's what you want them to do, right? Because over time, they're going to be astronomical growth for you. Large cap. When you take the number of shares of stock people own worldwide in a company, you multiply it by their current market share, you're gonna get their market capitalization. And that's good to know, because it tells you the demand of that company, and if they have those deep pockets, right, and they have high demand, then it might be a company you wanna go after. Right, Megan? Small cap, $500 million in capitalization low. Smaller companies, a little bit more riskier, right? And then finally, penny stock, you all like that, right? It's a favorite of your age. You have to be 18, by the way, before you invest. But I have a lot of students that, when they graduate from this class, get their certification in financial literacy per the uh, treasurer's financial scholars, which you're all going to get, right, thanks to the treasurer and People's Credit Union, right? You get your certificates. Um, maybe your parents, if you're not 18 yet, will, um, I have this happen a lot, they invest together, right? And I hear reports that come back and make some money. 
right? I want you all wealthy because I'm getting old and you're going to come back and support me, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, all right, thank you. All right. Penny stock, $5 or less, right? That's what the government says, $5 or less, but cheap stock, right? You can take a, a, a lot of companies start as penny stocks, right? Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is there's not a lot of data on these corporations, right? You cannot, it's very difficult to evaluate whether or not they're going to be growth, they're going to be even around. So you've got to be very careful, but it's cheap enough to take a risk. Just do your homework.